If you have questions about retirement, like when you can start collecting Social Security or when to draw on your retirement accounts, you're in luck. Chris Otto is here from Banco Investment Services. Aloha, Chris. Hey, aloha, Steve. So uh, as a financial planner, you must get a lot of questions about the what's and when's of retirement, right? Yeah, definitely I do. But, you know, when you break it down by age, it's actually a lot easier to follow. All right, let's do that then. Yeah, so let's kick off today's discussion with age 50, for example. So by age 50, it's a good time to kind of stop and check to see if you're on track for retirement. Now, thankfully, the IRS also believes it's a good time to stop and check. And that's why by the age 50 and older, people are eligible to actually contribute a lot higher contributions to their respective IRA accounts if they need or want to. Yeah, so you can catch up. And it's funny you say that. So that's, that's the IRS code. It's actually called an IRS catch-up contribution. Now, the next important milestone to be aware of is the year that you turn 59 and a half. Now, this one's important, and it's technically the age that you begin taking, you can begin taking penalty-free withdrawals from your various retirement accounts. And the key phrase here is penalty-free. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's absolutely right. It's penalty-free in the sense that there's no 10% withdrawal penalty for early distributions, but you generally still need to pay Uncle Sam taxes on any distribution made. That's probably why many people don't actually start taking withdrawals at 59 and a half unless they absolutely need the income and they don't mind paying taxes on it. But, you know, nonetheless, it's an important milestone to be aware of, especially if someone's planning to retire early. Yeah, now we're moving up in age. What, what about Social Security? Great question. You know, when it comes to Social Security, the first key milestone is age 62. That's because 62 is the earliest age you can begin receiving Social Security benefits. Again, with that said, Claiming Social Security does come with a cost. That may result actually in your income being reduced as much as 30%. I think that's why a lot of people decide to wait until their full retirement age. Yeah, 30, that's big. So, so what is full retirement age? Uh, yeah, it's a huge hit, indeed, 30%. Um, full retirement age is actually different for everyone because it's based on the year that the person is born. Now, thankfully, you can easily find out what your individual retirement age is or full retirement age by simply visiting Social Security's website at www.ssa.gov. So it, it's smarter to wait, Chris? You know, financially, it definitely can be, but each person's situation is different, right? And that's why it's important just to kind of be aware of these important milestones that, so that you can plan accordingly. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, just two more milestones I want the viewers to be aware of. The next one is at age 70. There's also an additional financial, there's no additional financial benefit for delaying Social Security. So again, make sure you set up your Social Security by age 70. And last but not least, the IRS also requires all people turning 73 this year to begin taking their annual required minimum distributions, also known as RMDs. This is basically Uncle Sam's way of making sure you start paying taxes on all those wonderful years of tax deferred growth. Yeah, that, that, that's a lot, Chris, so we appreciate it. Yeah, indeed. But remember, you don't have to do it alone. Be sure to talk to your HR department if you have 401 k questions, or talk to your financial advisor to determine what's right for you and your situation. Uh, aloha, Chris. Thank you. Always a pleasure, Steve. And be sure to visit us online at BOH.com to learn more tips and, and find resources about planning for your successful retirement.